Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 493 for Wednesday, October 18th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take a few topics, we dissect them, we analyze them. We do all of this to tune our business brains such that we can each keep on living those charmed lives that are important to us. Sponsors for this episode include fastmail.com slash business brain. That's where you go to get 10% off your first year. We'll talk more in depth about that for now here on we have casual Friday. I think it's causal Wednesday in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. (laughs) Causal. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you doing on this ca- causal Wednesday? Causal Wednesday. We got to cause things to happen. I don't know, man. Like, if yeah, we're going to like celebrate it. being casual, let's celebrate being intentional. I don't know. That's good. I, I like it. Right? I don't know. Yeah. Um, Very good. <laughs> I, had a, I had an interesting interaction this week that, that caused me okay. to think a little bit. I'm in this Facebook group of parents who are also fans of the band Fish. It doesn't really matter, okay. but I'll set the, I'll set the tone. Okay. You have fish parents. Sure. Got it. And, uh, I am, and it's really for parents of like younger kids than mine are right. Like it, oh. it sort of ends okay. with late teens, you know, so my kids are 21 okay. and 23. So I've kind of aged out of this, this group a little bit. You're like a mentor now, but now, now I'm like it. a mentor. Yes. I've been through it. it and, and everybody's yeah. like, you know, I, I generally don't comment much, but, but every now and then I do. And somebody was asking how to deal with managing screen time for their kids. Great question. Right. And their kids are, you know, 10, 11, 12 or something like that. Right. So, you know, they're, they're in that realm and the world is different now than it was 10 years ago. Certainly different than it was 40 years ago when I grew up, but it was really interesting. And they asked, you know, the, the question was, Sorry, my my the audio on on um on on the new Mac OS sucks. So that's why I cut out there. Ah. But the um the question was, you know, are there any good videos or resources for my kids to watch about the negative effects of screen time? It's a good thoughtful. And it was like, it. Yeah. well, but it was it was a loaded question. Right. Like that well, question. It's, selling past, it's going past the sale. They're telling you it's negative, right? Correct. <laughs> and, I, you know, I'm always tuned into those kinds of things because yeah, because yeah. of that. Right. The selling past the sale. And so I was like, OK, I'm going to write something here. But but in the in the back of my head, I'm thinking I'm going to use this content in multiple places. Right. And I, you know, I started off by telling him, look, I, you're probably going to want to dismiss everything I'm about to say. I, you know, my kids have aged out of this group. But here's, and and my advice might seem antiquated because when my kids were coming up, social media was less evolved than it is now. But the same is true for when I was coming up because though I am a 52-year-old person, I also grew up as a digital native. And and that's rare for people my age, right? It's kind of, you know, it's kind of how it goes. It's... Um, yeah, you're in that industry. I would say similar with me, you you're, you've embraced it cause it was part of your, uh, career, right? Part, well, in part of, but not just part of my career, it was part of my childhood. I had a computer oh. at home when I was, you know, from the age of 14 on, we owned our own computer before that I would bring home the computer from school every weekend and I was online. I ran bulletin boards, right? So like I, was I, I, you know, I, I was on social media at the age of 14 and we had, you know, some great discussions and really bonded with people all over the world. We also had flame wars where people were attacking each other. We had people who got bullied online. I had two friends who killed themselves. It, 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 right. I mean, like all the things that, that happen today on social media, I saw yeah. when I was 14, yeah. It was not all roses. Like it was, you know, you're, was, you're leading me down that negative pipeline here. Like well, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I've yes. seen it all. Like, I, you know, okay. in, in Got my it. way. 
And also in my way, my parents were aware of exactly none of this. And I didn't intentionally right. hide it from them. In fact, I had a very open conversation with my parents. Uh, I just had I, this, my own little world that was going to be, even though my dad is a, you know, he's an electrical engineer by, by training and, a, and, and understood how to write software and all that stuff. Like he was fairly and still is fairly technologically astute for his age, but he had never been online before. This was a new thing, right? And so it was really difficult to explain any of this to someone who wasn't in it, especially somebody who had no context, right? Whatsoever. Right. At least now kids' parents are on Facebook. So like there's yeah. there's some version of that. And and so I I was online, you know, and it was how it was. And then I realized that my kids when my kids hit that teenage years, I realized, wait a minute, this is kind of the same because while I understand the technology and I understand uh, what it's at a high level, what's possible, my kids it, it, like are experiencing a different version of this than I understand. Correct. And yes. therefore, it's simpler for them not to explain every nook and cranny of it to me. Even if they wanted to, it would be simpler not to. And of course, I know they encountered things that they would have felt uncomfortable talking to us about, even though we have a very open conversation. So I'm sure there are things that they hid from us, obviously. Right. Right. Okay. But, but in neither scenario with us, with our kids and my dad with, with me, and neither scenario was screen time treated as bad. And that I think is really what, what, you know, mm. kind of alerted me by this, this post that I saw where this person was and, asking. And I, are you, it, and when you tell your kids something's bad, they naturally want to. <laughs> they want to do it. They, you yeah. limit, you know, if you limit it, uh -huh. but my dad did one thing for me it, of all the things that he could have limited or guided or, you know, all, any of that. He only did one thing. I would say, all right, I'm finished with dinner. I'm going to go play on the computer now for a while. And his response was always, hey, don't say you're going to go play on the computer. Say you're going to go work on the computer. Mm. And this was, okay. I, I didn't even think about this until I, until today. Right. But it was, it was a mantra. Like I knew what he was going to say. And so eventually I just started saying, I'm going to go work on the computer for a while because it, it meant I didn't have to have this excess conversation. I knew what he was going to say. So he had trained me to say this because it was an easy request to heed. I didn't care sure. whether I said play or work. It didn't, you know, I had yeah. no religion on this. This was not my hill to die on. And we kind of did the same thing with our kids. And now the three of us, me and each of our kids are gainfully employed in uh, careers rooted in technology and social media. And so it got me to, th and they, n none of us had hard and fast limits on this. Now we did with our kids and the same would have been true at, at my house. Um, it, it, growing up, but it's a little different with phones. We obviously didn't have smartphones when I was a kid, but it, you know, in yeah, our house, it was everything. like, look, if you're going to be stuck in the car for hours, then using your, your phone is fine. If you're going to be at the yeah. dinner table, we're not going to do that. Uh, right. So yeah. there were rules, but there weren't like these artificial thou shalt get X number of hours. And listen, I know there are many of you listen to me who have chosen a different path with your kids. There is no one right way to parent, right? There are many oh, yeah, correct course, ways to parent there, there's, and there's many, many wrong ways and limiting your kids screen time, in my opinion, does not fall into you know, wrong ways or bad parenting by any stretch, right? Like it's just different, but I will say that by not limiting it, we didn't make it a thing that needed to be coveted. I like that. It's a good framework. Um, it, it's another tool. And like every tool, there's a right way to use it and a wrong way to use it. Sure. And, and uh, I think that is a great way to have to, share that framework with your kids um, because they get that. They, yeah. They're not going to run towards it. You know, Oh, this is something I, you know, bad or I'm, I'm coming up on the one hour mark. Right. I, I better sneak it here, sneak it there. But, and I, I, I like, I, I actually, I love that framework. The, 
challenge, I think, um, is the fact that there's so many parts of it that it, you know, there's addicting parts of it that yes. you really have to make them aware. But that's that's the but that's the a different side. thing. Hey. But that that yeah. like the way yeah. to combat a potential, uh, you know, addiction of of that sort of dope the dopamine rush is not to yes. say don't ever do it. Right, like yes, it correct, doesn't correct. work. It would be yes. great if that That's worked. I, I, yeah, I've told yeah. told my kids, listen, don't blow it with alcohol because when you get older, socially drinking is fun. But once you go way past it, and if you ever have a problem with it, you can never do it again. Right. Exactly. So exactly, it, it lessons like yeah. So it's a it's a great framework. I'd love to hear. I mean, this is not a show about kids, but you you could probably take this into a business. Uh, you know, concept as well, but it yeah. would be great to hear what other people are doing about screen time, whether it's at home or whether it's at your office. Cause you know, a lot of people lock you out or, you know, at works, you can only go in certain places or whatever. It's a, it's a, it's a good discussion to have. All right. Look in today's digital age, email isn't just a way to send messages. It's the backbone of our professional lives. But amid all these concerns of privacy breaches and cluttered inboxes, do you often find yourself asking, shouldn't our email work better for us? Well, that brings me to our sponsor, Fastmail. With over 20 years under their belt, Fastmail has proven to be a leader in email privacy. They're ad-free and promise no tracking, so you can trust your messages remain yours and yours alone. The convenience of having your calendar, email, and contacts all integrated into one service is unparalleled. Now, we've all had our fair share of email mishaps, right? Have you ever accidentally sent an email prematurely? Or do you find yourself drowning in a flood of subscriptions? Well, with Fastmail's features like scheduled send, snooze, and masked email, I've found my productivity skyrocketing. The masked email in particular is a game changer. No longer do I have to worry about sharing my primary email address with every new website or service. And for people in our line of work running businesses, right? The option to use our own domains to create custom email addresses, pure gold. So if you've ever faced the ordeal of a cluttered inbox or wished you had better control over your email experience, Fastmail might just be the solution you've been looking for. To learn more about Fastmail, visit fastmail.com slash businessbrain for 10% off your first year. Again, fastmail.com slash businessbrain for 10% off your first year. And then you can follow them on Facebook, X, Mastodon, and LinkedIn. And our thanks to Fastmail for sponsoring this episode. Years ago, Shannon, you introduced me to terms for something that you pointed out I tend to do pretty naturally. And it's this idea of pacing then leading in terms of interacting with people. Yeah. One of the most powerful things you can learn to do and you can teach others to do. Um, and, and I learned it from someone else and kind of the same thing. I realized I was already doing it and I yeah. would say good leaders Good managers, good supervisors, they they already do it. Um, uh, and the the concept is you're going to identify with whoever you're working with or talking to, and you want to pace them. You want to use similar language that than they use. Uh, if you're at the golf course, that's probably a different, maybe a different language type than if you're trying to get something um done at the truck stop. I don't know. You know I mean? Yeah. Pick, pick a couple of examples, just sure, different. Sure. Um, you're even clothing that you wear. Uh, you're going to pace the crowd that you're going to tuck. You know, if you're going to give a talk to the people that are, you know, keeping your warehouse going, do you really want to show up in a three piece suit? Now, maybe you want to be in jeans and a, and a pair of boots so you could help them work, you know, thinking like that. But the, the second part that is, critical is once you've paced them for a while and you've built up your credibility is you want to lead them to where you want to go. And, and we've done, we've talked about on the show here before. Um, I thought you had a great example of someone using it just in a regular, you know, life situation. Yes. And, and it is one of those skills that can help you in business and, you know, you'll tremendously can benefit from, but even just in your day-to-day -day life, if you've got to deal with someone it, it, yeah, I was I was helping a friend who was having a, like what we what I would call an interpersonal incompatibility, right? It, there, there, these yeah. these two people did not get along, but it wasn't because of something that happened. It was just you know there was no like 
oh, well, you know, you ran over my dog or whatever. Like there was no incident that caused this friction, but this friction existed. And I said, all right, well, think about who this person is. Like just slow down for a second and what's going on with this person. We were able to say, okay, well, this person, I, I like it's, it's a safe assumption. It might be a wrong assumption, but it's a safe assumption that they are suffering from some pretty consistent social anxiety. Okay, fine. Like that, that okay. like we, you know, I, I certainly suffer from that. I know it seems strange to say that what, be, being a podcast host, but uh, you know, it's, oh, it's true. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, okay, well, are you suffering from any of that? And the person I was helping said, yes. I'm like, okay, great. Have you ever communicated that to this person? No. Okay. Uh, so has, has this other person ever communicated it to you? No. How is this communication happening? Well, you know, I show up confident, acting confident and strong. This other person shows up acting standoffish. Okay. These are defense mechanisms to deal with social anxiety and they're fine. They're they, like, this is how you protect yourself. But if you want to actually get in with this person, you need to take their defense mechanism down. Now, good luck doing that. But one way of doing it is by taking yours down first. And I said, so reach out to them and say, hey, we've been you know, involved in this project together. And it seems like we've never really gotten together. And I, I know it's probably just me. But I'm, you know, I'm super socially awkward and, I, you know, I just don't know how to interact. And I'm, I'm wondering if you can help me showing some vulnerability, it's great. asking for help, right? All of yep. those things. It took, I don't know, 10 minutes from uh, reaching out that way for these two people to become fast friends because the other person was like, oh my gosh, same I have the same thing. I right. never know how to deal like, and then like fast friends within five days, they went from maybe we should never interact with each other to like, we're almost best friends here. And it's like, yeah, to figure out what's going on. And again, none of this was, I'll use the term manipulative. It, it was manipulative, but not in a negative way. This yeah, was a pro correct. productive manipulation, which is something we're all doing all the time. I'm doing it right now to everyone who's listening. I'm trying to manipulate you into thinking about these things in your life. Is this bad? No, I'm doing it because I think it's good for you. It's not going to benefit me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's why I like, yeah. I, I mean, I get the manipulation, but I like the word persuasion. Yeah, but so much even more pacing, because, like the yeah, idea pace. of pacing is meeting people where they already are, right? Yep. That's the key to this because- you can't lead them somewhere else until they trust you. And then the, right. the, and the leading really is the once you're in sync with this person, you walk in sync with them for a little bit. You do their things for a little bit. And then one day you, it's probably going to happen naturally. You're not even going to notice that you're doing it, but you offer a suggestion. Well, instead of going to this restaurant, why don't we go to that restaurant? Oh, that sounds like a good idea. You have just led them. That's it. Yes. Like it's those well, kinds I'm of things. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And and I you know, there's I could an example that I have is I always talk about our our warehouse and, yeah. and one of my businesses over time, I noticed that people didn't really talk to each other uh with respect mm. in the warehouse. And so I was like, I've got to fix this because you know, words have power. And even though it seemed like they're joking around you know, using uh, offensive language or curse words and that kind of stuff, it, it's not a positive environment that you want to work in. Right. And so I it was like, okay, how am I, I'm a, I got to stop this. And so I just started hanging out more in the warehouse. And I noticed they didn't cuss around, <laughs> at each other around me as much, right? I was older and the boss or whatever. Yeah, of course. But slowly... I, I got to the point where I could joke around with them, but I wasn't using that language and I could give somebody a hard time without using that kind of language. And I, I would go out there every day. I knew when their busiest times were, I'd go after the sh main shipments got out and this kind of stuff. And I just kind of made it part of my schedule to where I think I kind of ingratiated myself with them a, a lot more where they felt more comfortable having me around. And then I, I just talked to them better. And I noticed over time 
the the level of uh, or the the types of language used just you know was heightened and it was much better um to where i didn't have to go out there all the time yeah. and you know so learning how to read the room and thinking about what's your what what's your end goal uh you know what what do you what system are you trying to put in place if you want people to dress a certain way once you kind of build some credibility with them you just start kind of turning it up a notch and it's like okay i want uh everybody to be in this kind of you know, let's call it a uniform. Yeah, you want to move them from t-shirts to collared shirts. Well, show up in t-shirts for a little bit yes. and then, yes. you know, get yep. on their level and then show up with a collared shirt every now and then. Yeah, and, and then, figure out what yep. kind of collar shirt do you guys want to wear? Do you want the logo on it? Do yeah. you want a fun saying? You know, we used catchy phrases and funny looking uh, imagery to get our people to wear sh our shirts and and our customers would talk about it, you know, yep. um, they liked it, you know, you, you wear to the trade show and all that stuff. So pacing, build some credibility, learn to read the room. And you do have to be authentic though. It's, it's not, it, it's not something fake. No, it's, you're not. It, it, yeah. You're not using yeah. phoniness to manipulate. No. You have to throw and it, it like think vulnerability. It It's yeah, not always going to be you know, something as obvious as, Hey, we both have social anxiety, right? Like in my yeah, example, yeah. Start there. Think in your mind yeah. about, okay, have I shown this person any vulnerability? Because if you haven't, think about someone who has never shown you vulnerability. Are they yep. going, are you going to listen to them? What, yeah. Would you listen asking, to us if we didn't show up every now and then and say, oh yeah, we make huge mistakes all the time. We, we've made so many, we wrote a book about it. Right. <laughs> you like, know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and and asking someone to teach you is another great way to yes. do it. Like in this That's warehouse, super example, vulnerable, right? Yeah, if I Healthy. if I walked out, yeah, if I walked out in the warehouse and and try to jump into the shipping station and show these guys how it's done because I've shipped before, yada yada yada. Well, that may be true, but they're just going to look at you and go, "Look at this, you know, jackass. He doesn't yep. know what he's doing." But if I walk out there and say, "Hey guys, I know we've got some new new stuff going on in the shipping department. Can you show me?" how we're how you're using these tools and yeah. show me the software and show me that stuff that everybody loves to teach somebody. So you, you're pacing them right away. And then later when you start to see problems with the shipping structure, if there's something screwy with the system and maybe the reason why you went out there in the first place, because you're having shipping errors, but you got to go about it. You know, you got to think about it a little different because you want them on the same side of the table as you're in. It's always are. that. Yep. And they're going to help you solve the problem. You're going to work with them together instead of the boss coming down going, you guys are making too many mistakes and then storming out. You know, you've paced them and then you're leading them to a, a better solution together. So yeah. Yeah. if you use this system, tell us about it. Maybe you call it something different. Uh, feedback at businessbrain.show. We would love to hear from you. Yeah, he said feedback at businessbrain.show. And as you know, if we use your email in an episode, even if we don't say your name, but your idea came in, we put that on our list. And in what, seven episodes, we're going to right. have a drawing and we're going to give one of you a MacBook Air. It could be you. Feedback at businessbrain.show. Get in touch with us. Go check out our sponsor, fastmail.com slash businessbrain. And um, do me one more favor. Keep living that charmed life, huh? We'll see you on Friday.